Listen, if you don't care one little bit about lights right now for your videos, then you need to start caring. I would argue that lighting is what makes half of a picture cinematic. Another quarter of that would be the objects in the frame positioned to tell the story, and the last quarter being the composition in the frame. And if you don't know anything about lights and what they have to do with filmmaking, then this is a great place to start. So here is a quick explanation of three-point lighting in three minutes. Setup. One of the very important things to note about three-point lighting is the setup. There are three lights in this setup. The key light, fill light, and last but most, definitely not the least, the backlight. Key light. The key light is the primary light source that most of the time is placed higher and at a 45 degree angle from the subject right at their face. This doesn't have to be a hard light source, and this doesn't have to be an artificial light source. Many Hollywood productions simply use a window for a softer key light or the sun at golden hour or magic hour, which takes place within an hour of sunset or sunrise as a more dramatic key light. Fill light. The fill light is the secondary light source to eliminate any hard shadows and is often placed on the opposite side of the key light. This light is much softer than the key light and is often used in casual talking headshots and interviews. Backlight. But unlike the fill light, the backlight is prioritized much among these lights because of how much depth it adds to an image. This light is also called a rim light or a hair light for creating a little golden rim around the subject. Oftentimes, cinematographers will use the backlight as the brightest light source to give an extra mood for the scene. This light is placed high and behind the subject, enough where the camera doesn't see it, but doesn't leave a weird image. But the number one rule of all of these lights are to use them for the mood. The more shadows, the darker the mood of the scene. Using proper temperatures can also give a warm and inviting feel to the story, or a dark and cold touch down your spine. Softer lighting for a lighter mood, or edgy lighting for a crisper, more intense mood. That's why you often see so much flat lighting in comedies for a lighter mood and a lighter story. When you are telling a story, you need to know how you got from one place to another, and oftentimes, it's done more subtle than you think. The audience needs to know the origin of the light source you are using. And if you have a big shot sequence, you can take advantage of windows, fluorescence, headlights, candles, lamps, etc. for key light or backlight props. Note the word prop. Sometimes making it look like the main light source was bounced off a wall or an object is a good way of faking where the light was coming from, even though the real key light or backlight may not be bounced off a wall or is a lamp, but just hidden off to the side out of the camera's view. For example, if you light the scene with no lamp as a backlight prop, it could look a bit off in relation to if you included the lamp in your scene. This would be a perfect example of minimizing light. Right now, I'm not using a fill light, which I would put over here, but I am using a key light and a backlight with the lamp as my backlight prop. You take away the lamp, well, the picture would look different. Whew. I think we did it, right? <sighs> Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching this really quick explanation of three-point lighting. I hope it was really useful for you, and I hope you guys definitely take advantage of this method and use it in your films and your tutorials and whatever you're doing with video creation. Click here to see my latest comedy short film called The Race. Drop a comment if you would like me to do a longer tutorial on three-point lighting, how I might light different scenes, and even using three-point lighting without any lights.